called it, honey? A banquet Saturday? A sweetheart banquet if you got a sweetheart or some kind? Of, no, it's not a sweetheart. Some of we don't anybody got a sweetheart? Well, I guess all the men in trouble tonight, I guess. Uh, it will be Saturday, one o'clock. Two finger foods apiece. Amen. That would help out. Amen. That's what all I need to say. And a pack of drinks and a skirt. <laughs> What'd you say? A dessert. <laughs> All right, amen. She's mumbling over there, ain't she, D? You ain't getting in it. You got a sweetheart? All right, good job, amen, good job. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> That'll be Saturday, amen, so we'll have a good time. Thank the Lord, amen. Uh, also, uh, Bobby Jean was telling me that uh, Miss Jinx, what's her first name? What's, what's Rodney's mother's first name? Alice Jinx. Alice Jinx. She lives right down the street here on the left. She's actually in uh, hospice. And Rodney Jinx, amen, has stopped by, seen him on the way to church tonight, and asked that, we, that he would request prayer for her at the church. So let's pray for her and her health situation. she got cancer, amen, 77 years old, not doing well, amen. So remember that family in prayer. I know they'd appreciate it, amen. He said that Rodney was really broke up about it. Amen. So pray for him. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Been dealing with the subject of faith. We looked at the descriptions of faith within this chapter. Amen. Uh, now faith, the through faith, by faith, without faith, and dying in faith. I'm going to deal with the subject of the faith within the life of a Christian in his walk. Living the Christian life of faith. And the Holy Ghost has so inspired this book, as you know, but in chapter 11 here, he's given a great outline within the beginning of this chapter of how a child of God grows in grace and continues to walk by faith and how his walk by faith or her walk with faith increases with every step. Amen. And so the, the outline is laid out within the beginning of this chapter here, and we'll look at it tonight, and we'll look at it. There's five actual steps that we'll look at in walking the Christian life of faith. Number one, we'll look at the Bible. Well, let's just read, and then we'll get into it. The Bible says in verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And what we have is the report of the elders within this chapter here. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God spoke it, and there it was. So let's pray tonight. Brother John, how about pray for us? Amen. When you pick up Hebrews chapter 11 and begin to read this chapter, the definition of faith is clearly the introduction of the thought within the chapter in verse 1. Now faith is, and there it is, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And throughout this chapter, I believe if I counted correctly, there are 19 individual people that are represented that God uses or describes their walk of faith and their steps of faith and within their lives. And as a whole, he begins to throw the children of Israel walking with Moses and the things that they've done. But there's 19 individuals that God used to walk by faith. And we as individuals, as Christians, should live a life that's by faith because without faith, it's impossible to please him. 
Amen. But when we begin to walk the Christian life of faith, the book of Hebrews in chapter 11 gives a little outline of how we walk and grow in grace and in the wisdom and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because we know throughout the Word of God it describes the pictures of a child of God as a babe in Christ, and then as a young child, and then so on and so forth to an age, aged individual. And God gives that growth process and how children of God grow in grace. But within chapter 11 here I see the, the growth of a child of God in the walk of faith. In verses 3, which is the one we'll deal with tonight, the first work before any work is ever mentioned within this walk of faith with all these individuals that are listed, the first thing that God shows us that he done a work. Amen. And before anybody begin to walk by faith and please the Lord, God has to do a work of faith in your life. That, of course, is the work of salvation. Then after you see the work of God in verse 3, he begins to describe individuals and you see the growth process as it goes forward. We are to be saved by the work of God in verse 3, but in verse 4, by faith, Abel. Abel is shown as worshiping God. After you get saved by the grace of God and God does a work in your life, you need to begin by beginning worshiping God by faith showing up at the local house of God, opening up the word of God and worshiping and praising God for his goodness in your life. And as you grow in grace in the, in the faith and the walk with God, after God saves you by the work that he's done and you begin to worship the Lord, then God continues to let you grow. And in verse number five, the Bible says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And Enoch's known as the man that walked with God. After God saves you, he does a work in your life. The next step of faith, you need to learn to worship God and praise him. And then after you begin to worship God, you begin to grow in faith, God will let you walk with him and begin to show you the miracles that he can do walking by your side. And then the next character you see here in verse number uh, 7 is Noah. Noah, warned of God, what did he do? He built an ark. So God does a work in your life. You begin to worship him, and as you worship the Lord and grow in grace, God lets you walk with him. And after you walk with the Lord a little while, God will give you a work to do. Just as he did with Noah, he gave him a job to build an ark so you can work for the Lord. And then next you see Abraham and Sarah and the seed that's conceived through their life where God begins to rock miracles within your life or the fruit that is displayed by your faith. So that's basically how the walk of faith goes. God does a work in your life. You learn to worship at his feet. God lets you walk with him and then God lets you work for him and then you see the things that are wrought in your life and that's the ultimate goal is for to bring fruit to the glory of God by your life. That's the steps of faith within an individual's life. You see that through all the individuals if you pick up your Bible. I've done it, you take the book of Matthew and you take the apostles of the Lord. And before they ever done anything, the first thing God did is God came by and called them. It was Peter uh, and, and James out there by the fisher making fishers of men. God comes to call them. That's a type of salvation. He goes to Matthew out there at the receipt of customs and calls him to follow him. It's the work of God in those individuals' lives. And as you still own in the book of Matthew after God calls these individuals, in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, you see the Sermon on the Mount. These men are sitting at the feet of Jesus and worshiping him. He is educating them. He is teaching them the ways of God. Amen. That's the name step in your Christian life. And then after Matthew 5, 6, and 7, you go over here and God begins to uh, let them walk with him and see the miracles that he does and watching him raise the dead and touch the blind and, and heal the sick, amen, and they walk with the Lord and then God next gives them a work to do. In Matthew chapter number 10, God calls them out and commissions them to go out into the highways and hedges, if you will, and do a work for the Lord and go out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and bring in his sheep, amen. Amen. God lets them do a work. Amen. And after God lets them do a work, amen, you get over to the book of Acts and you begin to see the great fruit from the work that they do. That is the life of faith within an individual. Hey, but it all starts with tonight. Hey, God's got to do a work in your heart. Hey, there's no need to learn to worship the Lord or to walk with God or to work for the Lord or to bring forth fruit in your life if God has never done a work of salvation in your life first. That is the first step in walking by faith for the Lord. Amen. So let's look at this first step tonight. We get to Hebrews chapter 11. We said there's at least 19 individuals that are mentioned. But before God begins to mention anybody's work of faith, God tells us about his own work. 
It is the work of God. Through faith, verse uh, 3, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hey, nothing was ever done till God showed up. Amen. Hey, nothing could ever be done in our lives. No work of faith, no work of any kind of uh, abilities in our lives can be done until God first works on our hearts. Amen. It is the work of the Lord is the work of faith and walking for the Lord. When it comes to faith, the first thing God wants us to understand is that it all came from him. Matter of fact, that's the way he said it, verse 3. Through faith we understand. You know what God wants to do is give us some understanding of his work. You know why you're saved tonight? Because God gave you understanding of his work. Amen. Faith, of course, coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's all within the context of verse 3 here. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Amen. It's the word of God and understanding what God could do through his word. His word came to you and convicted you and showed you how Jesus Christ paid the sin that on the cross. And how that we were sinners and short of the glory of God. The word of God gave us that faith and began to work on our hearts and started the work of faith in our lives. Hey, we need to understand that it comes from God. Hey, salvation is of the Lord. Amen. Hey, if anybody's going to be saved, if anybody's going to serve the Lord, if anybody's going to walk with God and work for God and walk miracles out of their lives, hey, God must first work in them before he works through them. God wants to work in your heart. He wants to give us understanding. Amen. That it all comes from him and there's nothing that he cannot handle. Isn't it amazing when the Lord begins to describe what takes place by faith? He says, listen, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's a powerful thought. The worlds were framed by the word of God. And he goes on to say, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Hey, God done a work. You know what God's trying to get us to see here as we look at these great individuals of faith and we look at Abel and the great worship that he done to God and you look at uh, 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 Enoch and how he walked with God and Noah, how he worked for the Lord and Abraham and Sarah, how they wrought these great miracles through their lives and the seed that came forth. Hey, hey, none of that can be accomplished and nothing can be accomplished in our lives until we get a hold of what God can do with our lives. Amen. Hey, God is the instrument of faith and the power that we need to serve him. And if God can allow these individuals to do great things, hey, God can work through me and work through you to do great things also. Living the Christian life of faith is understanding that God can handle anything you come up against. Hey, God, God used these individuals, and they came up against hard things in their lives, but you know what they had to realize? My God is able. God is able. Amen. Look in, he, look in Genesis 1. We're going to get back there Wednesday night, so I'll just briefly look at this. Amen. Genesis chapter number 1. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What a profound statement. What a powerful statement. Hey, what, what that, that little thought and truth could do within our hearts that God made all this. And if my God, my God, your God, the one that has saved your soul, made all this, there's nothing that he can't handle in our lives. Amen. Hey, the, 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 uh, the cherubim's destruction that took place in verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and, the, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. Hey, the angelic beings and the uh, cherubim, uh, the anointed cherub that, he that, that headed out that destruction that brought down to this earth, amen, destroyed the earth that God had created and plummeted into darkness. Hey, but God brought something out of that destruction, amen, and in time, we see in the beginning that God made something out of a mess, and we need to understand when we walk by faith, when God saves us, God can make something out of our mess. Amen. And God can use you to worship him. Man, who, who's worthy to worship God? Hey, man, who's worthy to walk with God? Who's worthy to do a work for God or the wrong miracles out of life? Hey, nobody apart from God working in their hearts, amen. God makes something out of the mess, and God saw the light, and it was good. And so God comes forth. Look in Colossians chapter number 1. 
It is God that made all things, and so our God can handle all things. And he wants us to understand that. After the mess was made, God made it good. Amen. And you know what God can do in your life? After the mess that we made, God can make it good. Amen. Hey, my life was a mess and a wreck before God. Your life was a wreck and a mess before God. But thank God, God can make it good. And God can look out and say, it is good, and then he can only go a little bit further and say it is very good, amen. Hey, God wants to use your life if you would trust him by faith and allow him to do something with you. Colossians 1 and 15, the Bible said, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. They consist by God. God made them. God keeps them. Amen. And what, and what God's trying to get us to see here, that by faith we understand through faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God keeps it together. God made something out of it. God made something out of the mess. And God can make something out of our mess and consistently keep us together so we can serve him by faith. When it comes to living the Christian life of faith, we need a work of salvation within our hearts, and there's no living by faith without God working in first. Amen. God has to do a work in your life. That is the gift of faith. For by grace are you saved. Kids know it, right? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Salvation is the work of God. It is God's gift, amen. And just as God describes these individuals by faith, God said, I want you to know that all things start with me. Amen. And when God saves your soul, God can begin to do a work in your life. Amen. The gift of faith, Romans 5. The unspeakable gift of 2 Corinthians 9. Hey, God wants to do a work on you, amen. Hey, hey look, look, in, look in John chapter number 10. We're talking about the work of God. It's a little bit more about salvation, the work of God in salvation. And I know you know it, but I want you to see the principle here. Hey, what the step of faith starts with God saving your soul. When God saves your soul, he begins to work of faith in your life. And then you can learn, continue to grow in grace and walk by faith and please the Lord with your life. But no one will ever please him until they first be saved. Do you know that salvation, the work of God... It cannot be purchased. You can't buy it. You can't buy your salvation. Amen. Uh, you can't borrow it. Amen. And it cannot be stolen. It is given from God. It is the work of him. When John chapter 10 and verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own by own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. Amen. Hey, the work of God on the heart of an individual. Amen. Jesus Christ is the door. He is the chief shepherd. And anybody that comes in any other way is a thief or a robber. Amen. And you cannot steal it. Amen. And you cannot borrow it. And you cannot buy it. Amen. It is the gift of God. Salvation is of the Lord. God's got to do a work on your life. This faith is what showed up when you got saved. Look in Romans chapter number 10. It showed up when God saved you. God done a work. We understand through faith. Isn't it amazing when you go back and look at these principles? Now faith is a faith with power, and through faith is a faith with promise. And he begins to describe the work of God before anybody does anything. And you put it in the context of the order of the steps of walk of faith in life, that it's the through faith of God that saves us with a promise. Salvation is with a promise. Amen. God saves us forever. Romans chapter number 10, God gives you that faith. How did it happen? Romans 10 and 8. 
But what saith it? The word, there it is, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God showed you the principle, the truth of how he done it. It was by his word, the spoken word that brought it, brought it to pass. And the faith of us to be saved comes from the word of God that's in our mouth, that's in our heart. That's what we've heard preach, amen. And God comes to you with preaching of the word of God and the word of God gives you faith to believe on what God did. Look in verse 17. He said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Look back in Hebrews chapter number 11. We live by faith. It is God's power that saves us, amen, and keeps us, amen. We are to serve the Lord. But before anybody can serve the Lord, they must be saved by God's work. It's the work of faith. It's the work of God. Yes, Abel worshiped. Yes, uh, Enoch walked with God. And yes, uh, Noah worked. And Abraham and Sarah and all the other individuals wrought a lot of great work in their lives. But before anybody wrought anything, God said, look what I did. God created all things. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Do you know what God wants us to get a hold of? We're going to live by faith with him. You're going to have to have confidence in God. How are you going to do anything by faith unless you have confidence in God? You must understand that God done a work on your life and what God done, he done it forever. When you begin to walk by faith, if you're going to worship the Lord and you're going to walk with him when the trials come and begin to work with him when the devil's fighting and trying to walk work and all hell's trying to break loose, hey, you better start at the beginning where God worked the work in your heart and you know he did it. In other words, you need to know that you know that you know that God done a work in your heart. Amen. You need to know you're saved. Amen. God wants you to know that you are his and he is Amen. yours. Amen. Look in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 12. You need to have confidence in God. Hey, through faith we understand that the world's refrained by the word of God. I've got confidence in God that he made this thing. God created this thing, and that's going to rock you from it. And when it comes to your salvation and the work of God in your heart and walking by faith, you need to understand that God saved you and that he done exactly what he said he done. He began to be that. Well, did God do a work in my life or not? Did he or did he? Did he not? Amen. Brother Nolan said this morning, amen, we sung that song, I can take you to the place. I know where God saved my soul. That's confidence in God. And when you get the confidence that you know that you're saved, then you can begin to make steps of walking by faith for the Lord. But a lot of people can't go forward because they've not got out the cradle, amen, realizing that God has saved them. I know that I'm a child of God, and that's why I worship him. I know that I'm a child of God. That's why I walk with him. I know that I'm a child of God. That's why I work for him, amen. And I know that I'm a child of God. That's why God allows me to roll things in my life because God has saved my soul. Yeah, you got to have confidence in God. Ephesians chapter 3, look in verse number 12. The Bible says, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Did God do a work in your life? Do you have confidence in what he did? Look in 1 John chapter number 5. 1 John chapter number 5. God done a work in your life. You need to have confidence in him. That I know that God has saved me. Just as much as I know that God hung the stars and the moon and the sun and created all things, I know that God is my Savior. Yeah, Just as he made something out of chaos in the beginning of creation in Genesis chapter number 1, I know that he made a difference in the chaos in my life. It's God that made the change. It's God that wrought the miracle. And God done it just as he done it in the creation by the word of God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How do you know I'm saved? The Bible tells me so. This I know, amen. The B-I-B-L-E, the book, amen, God's, God's uh, 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 directions and instructions to mankind. I know I have confidence in what God has done. And if you're going to walk by faith, you need to get confidence in the fact that you know you're saved. You say, preacher, you think anybody's doubting it today? I don't know, amen. But I know you don't need to doubt it. 
And I, need, I know you need to know you got it. And you need to know who you got it from. And you don't need to be rocked by it, amen. If you're going to go forward and walk in by faith, you better get it settled that you're a child of God. Do you know how many people say today, well, I, I hope I am. Well, I think I might be. Well, I'm trying to be. What are you trying? What are you hoping on? I mean, you're hoping on that your good outweighs your bad? You think that God's going to look down and say you had enough church attendance to make it happen? You think God's going to look down and say, well, I see you got dunked that day in the water. That done it. Where's your confidence at? My confidence is in the one that hung the world. Yeah, Through faith, I understand that, God, that the word of God, that the world was made by the word of God. Hey, before I ever walked with God and worshiped the Lord and done something for him, I know God's going to work in my heart and save in my soul. Yeah, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah. I know something moved in that was not there before, and it changed my life from the inside out. That's the work of God. And he done it by the word of God. Amen. When did you believe? After that you heard. What did you hear? The gospel, amen. And after I heard and, and believed, amen, God saved me and sealed me to the day of redemption. It's the earnest of his inheritance. You have confidence in God. Look in 1 John chapter 5, look in verse 9. A lot of people ain't got confidence in God. And what are you trusting in? Don't put no confidence in the flesh. Don't put no confidence in man. He'll fail you. Hope ain't going to get you out of it. The preacher ain't going to get you there. You better put your confidence in the one that died on the cross. The one that said that it is finished. The one that said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My confidence is in God. Look in verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. You know what the problem is today? People believe men more than they believe God. For this is the witness of God which you have testified of his son. You know what it's about? It's about his son. If you're saved, it's about the son. It's about the work of God. It's about the word of God. He, verse 10, that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. What record did God give of his son? What did God say to the son? Who's going to declare his generation, the Bible said? Hey, that how he came and was born of a virgin and lived a sinless life and died on an old rugged cross and took my place and your place and the world's place for that matter. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he displayed him between heaven and earth that if anybody would look to him as the children of Israel did as that serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness, they shall be saved. My confidence is the one that was lifted up for you and I. It's the witness of God. It's the record of God. You say, well, people believe you get it all kind of other ways, but what's the record of God say? What's the book say? Verse 11 says, and this is the record that God have given to us, what? Eternal life, and this life is in what? People say, well, you can get saved and then lose it. Well, what's the witness of God say? What's the testimony of God say? Amen. God said it and there it is, right? The witness of God is, this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. Eternal life ain't in nothing but the son. Yeah, amen. People say, well, I'm, I got saved by something else. Well, you didn't get it God's way. Eternal life is found in the son. Verse 12 says, he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not what? So where's life? It's in the Son. So if I've got the Son, I've got life. Not only life, I've got eternal life. But on the other hand, if you don't have the Son, you do not have life and, you do not, or you, and you're not going to spend eternity with God. Amen. This is the record of God. What, what, what is all this about? Look in verse 13. These things have been written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may what? Is that what the book says? Do you know how people say, they say, well, you can't know you're saved. Well, I, I care the difference. The witness of God says I can. The book that we claim to be the word of God tells me that I can know. So it doesn't really matter what any preacher says or any grandma says or grandpa says or even you or I say. What's the book say? 
The Bible said, these things have I written unto you. This is it. The worlds were framed by the word of God. God done a work by his word. And God wants us to see that principle and walk in my faith. God's got to do a work on your heart by the word. Look, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You got that? Look in verse 14. And this is the what? What's your confidence in? This is the confidence. Where did I get the confidence from? I got the confidence from his word. I got my confidence from what the word said about his son and what his son done in my life when I received him as my savior. And this is the confidence that we have of him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Hey, we need to have confidence in God. I believe God's trying to show a principle there in Hebrews chapter number 11 when he sees these people worshiping him and walking with him and the things that are wrought by him and the work that's done. It all started by God doing a work in our lives and us having confidence in God. You know what? When I get that kind of confidence in my life, if Abel can worship him, I can. Amen. Same God that they serve is the God I serve. Hey, if, if Enoch can walk with God, why can't I? I'm his child. Matter of fact, I've got the sealing of the Holy Ghost and I'm in the body of Christ and i got a relationship with, his God, with my God and i got his imputed righteousness. If Noah can work, why can't I work? And if Abraham and Sarah can wrought works of God, why can't you and I wrought works of God? Amen. Hey, God can do it, but God wants us to understand it all starts by receiving the work of God in our hearts first. If you're going to do something by faith, you better get a hold of what God done for your heart by faith. Amen. You're going to have to get to believe in the book and having confidence in God. You know what confidence in God does? He gives us a now faith. That's the power right now. That's confidence in my God can do it. Hey, I've got confidence that in my God that not only he, I, through now faith gives me power, his through faith will promise to carry me through. And, and he is the one that I walk by faith with. And he's the one that uh, without him I can do nothing, amen. And he's the one that I'm going to die in that faith when I see him one day. Hey, because I know God done a work in my life. I've got confidence in him which produces confidence from his word. Take the examples of the book. Until God showed up in anybody's life, they never done anything. I don't care who it is. I don't care if you look in any dispensation. And I understand the different dispensations in the way of salvation. And Brother James has been fitly teaching that kind of stuff to give us a greater understanding of the Word of God. I think it's good for the church. But you know what? I don't care how they got saved, whether it was by faith and works, whether it was by faith, whether it's going to be by no faith in the millennial. I don't care. You pick the individual. You pick the dispensation. They didn't nobody do anything till God done something in their lives. Nobody. Abraham. He knew nothing that God showed up. No other than that wicked generation. Ain't nothing short that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah, hey, hey, Cain and Abel, amen, the mess they made. Hey, hey, you look at all Adam and Eve and the mess that they made. Hey, nothing was done until God showed up and done something first in their lives. Yeah, and God, what God wants us to understand and is to have confidence in that what God done a work in your life, the possibilities are endless of what he can do with your life. You say, preacher, I want to worship the Lord. Are you saved? How many people just started going to church and started worshiping God? That's, that's the step that, you know, the old saying is putting the cart before the horse. Nobody, when he described these individuals and these processes of steps of faith right here and living in, in the Christian life, he didn't say nothing about anybody till he said something about himself. And that's a principle God wants you to see. That, hey, if something's going to be done in your life and something's going to be done in my life, God's got to do a work in your life first. And you need to know that God done it. You need to be able to take the devil to the place when he comes and says you're not saved. And when your flesh rises up because of the disobedience that comes, you need to go back and say, I know that I'm a child of God because I know the word of God tells me so. That's where my confidence at. God done a work in your life? If God's done a work in your life by faith, thank God he saved your soul. You know what you need to learn next? And we'll see next week. You need to learn just simply how to worship God. 
you settled in your heart, you got confidence in him, and you get confidence in what God can do, the possibilities are endless of what God can do through your life by faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Yeah, they did, and we've seen the report, but he says, listen, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Before I tell you about anybody's report, he said, let me tell you about my report. Let me tell you what I've done. And that's the process of faith in living the Christian life. You need to understand what God has done in your heart. It's the work of God. Amen? Everybody stand. God done a work. If you're not sure you got it, you need to get it. If you're struggling with the assurance of it, you need to battle with God over the word of God and trust God and, and put your faith in him. Amen?